what is an event well this is the commonly used english word but we're not going to use the google definition of this because this is a math video we're going to understand this word in the context of the chapter probability let's get started to understand this let's toss two coins what do you get when you toss two coins well let's list down all possible outcomes that can occur and by the way we know that this is also called sample space so the sample space will have these possible outcomes either we can have both of them as heads or we can have the first one as heads and the second one as tails or the first one as tails and the second one as heads and finally both of them as tails there's nothing else that can happen these are the four possible outcomes now let's get creative suppose we want to understand how do we get these scenarios how do we get exactly one head how do we get exactly two heads at most one head or at least two tails we can get exactly one head by either having the first coin as heads or the second coin as heads that's it now how do we get exactly two heads well there's only one way both of them have to be heads and how do we get at most one head well at most one head means maximum number of heads is one so either we can have zero heads which means both of them as tails or either one of them as heads and the other one as tails now how do we get exactly two tails again there's only one scenario when both of them are tails now think about it what did we do here we made smaller groups of the outcomes from the sample space in math world we call them subsets so to define what an event is we can say that any subset e of a sample space s is called an event all four of these are called events and we can have many more of them and this is how you'll see them in your textbooks you'll see them written in the set notation so we have the set s which is the sample space which has these four outcomes and then you have these four events which are subsets and that's the keyword which are subsets of the sample space so that's it events are subsets of sample space now how do we know that an event has occurred let's again toss two coins this is our sample space now let's assume that this is what we get we toss two coins and we get the first one as heads and the second one as tails the question for us is this event e which is exactly one head has this event occurred think about it well there's nothing much to think about we can actually see that there's exactly one head on the screen we have the first one as heads and the second one as tails so yes the event has occurred in this case the first coin was heads but we could have also got the second coin as heads for this other outcome as well we can say that the event has occurred if we had gotten anything else then we would have said that the event has not occurred all right let's move on let's talk about types of events we can have our sample space back and let's look at a few examples let's suppose we have this event which says we we need 14 heads another one nine tails okay one more zero heads and zero tails what can you say about these three events can you have these events are these events possible well no if you toss two coins these events are not possible and hence they're called surprise impossible events let's look at a few more examples another event e which says zero or more heads another one less than 10 heads one more at most two tails think about it are these events possible well yes of course they're possible in fact they're always going to happen we're always going to have zero or more heads we're always going to have less than 10 heads and we're always going to have at most two tails so these events are called sure events there are many more examples but i picked a few interesting ones here so this is one way to look at different types of events let's look at one more again my sample space and these four outcomes look at these events one event is we get two heads another one a head and a tail one more a tail and a head and a fourth one 
two tales what can you say about these four events well the technical term here is these are simple events why simple because they only need one outcome or one sample point from the sample space let's look at a few more we have an event which says at least one head now to get at least one head we need either both heads the first one head or the second one head another example at most one head now for at most one head we need either two tails or the first one tail and the second one head or the first one head and the second one tail that's how you get at most one head now these examples have more than one sample points they have in this case three sample points each when you have more than one sample points you're no longer looking at simple events you're looking at compound events and this is your second way to classify different types of events let's move on and now look at the algebra of events things are looking interesting so this time let's roll a die now when you roll a die this is your sample space you get six possible outcomes 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 let's look at these two events the first event is a which is 1 or 6 and the second event is b which is 3 5 or 6 this means that if you get 1 you can say that your event a has occurred for example if you get 5 you can say that your event b has occurred now when will a not occur this is called the complement of a or event a dash this will happen when you'll get 2 3 4 or 5 all right so what will be the complement of b that's the event b dash and that will occur when you'll get 1 2 or 4 basically you get rid of all the elements that you have in b and you'll pick whatever is left from the sample space that's when b will not occur let's look at a few other cases what about event a or b what about event a and b and what about event a but not b now or and but not these are again english words and i encourage you to pause the video and think about these events now a or b means either a or b or both have happened again a and b means both a and b have to happen together and a but not b that means event a has happened but b does not happen now if we apply this logic this is what we get for a or b we get 1 3 5 and 6 what we have done is we've picked elements from a and b both and put them together in this set because either one of them can happen for us to get event a or b for a and b we only have this element 6 because that's the only element that is common in both a and b what this means is both a and b can together happen only when we get a 6 if we get a 1 we'll have event a happening but not b if we get a 5 we'll have event b happening but not a the only way we can get both a and b to happen together is when we get a 6 now the last one says a but not b which means a has happened but b does not happen so for a to happen we need 1 or 6 but if 6 happens even b has happened so what we can do is we can remove the 6 and only put 1 here the way to do this is you start with elements of a and you remove the elements that are common in both a and b that's how you'll get a but not b now let's look at the last important thing about events and in my opinion one of the most confusing things about this particular topic let's roll a die one more time and the sample space here is 1 2 3 4 5 6 <laughs> let's look at these events event a is the set of odd numbers event b is the set of even numbers what this means is event a has occurred when we get an odd number and event b has occurred when we get an even number we can say that there's nothing in common between a and b either the number is odd or the number is even for this case we can say that event a and b are mutually exclusive events when there's nothing in common we call the events as mutually exclusive all right let's move on let's look at another example event a is just 1 event b has all the prime numbers 2 3 and 5 and event c has the composite numbers 4 and 6 what can we say about event a b and c 
Well, if you add all of them up, you get the entire sample space. Together, they cover up all things possible. When this happens, we call these events as exhaustive events. They've exhausted all possible outcomes. I mean, together they've exhausted all possible outcomes. So there you have it. On the left, you have mutually exclusive events. And on the right, you have exhaustive events. One interesting thing that you can note here is the events on the left are not just mutually exclusive. They're also exhaustive. Think about it. Together, the odd numbers and even numbers also cover up the entire sample space. Events could be both mutually exclusive and exhaustive. We'll cover more examples in our problem solving videos. Now let's summarize. This is what we learned in this video. We talked about what an event is. How do we know whether an event has occurred or not? Different types of events, impossible and sure, simple and compound. And we also looked at the algebra of events. We talked about the complement of an event, event A or B, A and B, A but not B, etc. And finally, we looked at what mutually exclusive events and exhaustive events mean. All right.